Hello. Hey, it has uh, been a wonderful week for me, having some time off with family. I hope it's been the same for all of you as well. I'm actually in Arizona right now. I'm here visiting family for the weekend and um, getting in some sunshine, soaking in some sunshine. I've also been working on something that I think you're all going to be very interested in. I'm actually working right now on my book proposal for a new book called Well. That's uh, kind of an interesting title. It was titled A Few Other Things, and now we've gotten to uh, the point of it's being called Well. And this book is a very interesting compilation or combination of a lot of the things that I teach and a lot of the things that I live. Really, it's the way I live. And just the sunshine here today is an example of one of the things that I'm going to be teaching you about. Our bodies are made up of cells and each little cell, it's kind of like its own little community inside of that cell. There's all sorts of different processes that go along with it. There's manufacturing processes in our cell. There's the waste removal processes. There are um, the building processes, the construction, all these things happen inside of the cells. And when we're not well, let's say heart, there's high blood pressure. Well, what that means is each cell is not actually operating its best and it's in the, the way it should. That's not how healthy cells work. Well, if you can learn how to make one cell healthy, then you can actually learn to make every single one of your cells healthy. Isn't that kind of interesting? So what I do in this book is I teach you how to make every single cell healthy. And part of that cell health is actually providing energy. I often joke and tell people, you know, we plug in our phones when they die, but how do you plug yourself in? Like, how do you plug in to get more energy? What do you do to do that? Well, it literally is electrons. So where do they come from? Well, they come from the earth, the, the earth, like the ground that we stand on. And they come from the sunshine. They come from plants because the plants get them from the earth. This is where we get them from. And so we have to literally think, okay, if we're running out of energy, if we're running out of electrons and our bodies aren't operating the way that we would like them to, we have to supplement that energy somehow. We have to add electrons. Well, how do we do that? Well, one of the things we can do is to stand on the earth. So it's a great time during uh, some of these breaks to just literally stand on the earth, get some time touching the ground, but it's also time to get some sunshine. It's also time to get some fresh food that has electrons. All of these things just add energy to the system and add energy to every single cell and help you to be healthy, help them run better. So quick little, quick little snippet into the book. I actually am going to be pitching this book to a big publishers in uh, about the second week in January. So I am head down working on this. I have a sample chapter to write this week. It's only 5,000 words, no problem, right? <laughs> so 5,000 word chapter. Um, but it's just so needed. And I cannot wait to get this out to you because so many patients come to me every single day and they just have this look of despair, of despair, of hopelessness. If you've been there, if you felt like that, I know what you're feeling. I know what that looks like. And it's a really, it feels bad to be there. We've forgotten that the answers to all these health concerns that we have are actually in the world around us. We just don't remember. We didn't pass on information from generation to generation, grandma to grandma, like they used to. We didn't keep that knowledge of how to use these elements in the world around us to be able to stay well. So that's why I'm so anxious to get this book out to the world is because it's time. So on this live, I like to give you little updates like that, but let's answer some questions as well. So if there are some questions, um, yep, I can see comments. Uh, just looking at that, if you have a question, a dental health question, please send it here. I will be able to see them and um, I will be able to answer uh, hopefully some of the things that have been, you've been struggling with, some of those things that you feel despair and, and struggle around. Um, I'm a mom of four and take care of my health and just found out I have so many cavities. I don't know why, and I don't know what to do with it. What are some suggestions? All right, let's talk about this. This is actually one of my very favorite topics to talk about is with mamas. So it's so unfair. Sometimes I'll see a whole family and mom will come in and mom has a whole bunch of cavities. Kids, mixed bag. You know, some have cavities, some don't. They're frustrated. And then dad has nothing. And mom's really frustrated because she said he doesn't even know the right end of the toothbrush to use. How does he have no cavities? I brush twice a day. I floss. I'm, I take so much, you know, such good care of myself. Why is this happening? Well, 
really, it's a testament of the narrative that dentistry has been saying for so many years that you don't brush your teeth, you get cavities, that that's not really true because we see it so many times that that's not the only factor that impacts this. What does impact it? Well, mom of four, really what you're struggling with is you have been growing humans, right? Through pregnancy, also through nursing, you are growing humans. Well, think about growing a human. What needs to grow? Well, you need a lot of minerals because you're growing bones. You need cartilage. You need proteins. You need fat. You need all of the things that the body is actually made of, the components the body is made of. And we don't put these things together very frequently. We don't say, okay, yes, I am growing a human. And the human has bones, muscles, sinews, cartilage, tendons, brain matter, nerve tissue. It has all of those things. That's what the human body has. That's what that baby needs. Well, where does the baby get those building blocks to grow all of those different components? The same with nursing, especially with mamas who are exclusively nursing. Well, look at the growth that that baby is having from the day they're born to 12 months old, 18 months old, however long you're nursing. Where are they getting the building blocks for that growth? Through you. That's their only source of nourishment. And nourishment isn't just feeding you. Nourishment is providing the building blocks for growth. So mama... If you don't have enough for you and for baby, the body will always prioritize baby. Baby will always get enough for them and will leave you deficient. The teeth are a ready-made bank of minerals. So if you don't have enough minerals for your body's functions to proper to your body to function properly, your body will find them where they need to. And the teeth is a ready-made bank of minerals. So the body will steal minerals from your teeth to feed your baby for their growing bones. It's very simple. So what in the world do you do about it? <coughs> Excuse me. First thing we have to do is add minerals. Add lots and lots of minerals to the inside, which comes through either a liquid mineral supplement. My favorite is one called Humic and Fulvic. It's a liquid mineral su supplement from the earth. I made it a little easier in my tooth and bone formula. Again, you can find that on livingwellwithdrmichelle.com. Tooth and bone formula. It's mineral specific to growing bones. You have to do that from the inside. You also need to add minerals from the outside of your teeth. So that's a hydroxyapatite product like my tooth powder. Adding minerals to the outside, minerals to the inside. That's step number one. Step number two is actually making sure that you're absorbing those minerals properly. So how do you do that? Well, the key to absorbing minerals is ionizing them. You actually have to change the structure of the mineral once it hits your gut. So how do you know if you're able to do that or not? The key to that is stomach acid content or amount of stomach acid you have. If you don't have enough stomach acid, you are not going to be able to break those minerals apart or ionize those minerals properly, and you're not going to absorb them. So you're even, you know, you're eating more, you're doing a great job, but it's going out the other side. So you need to go check out my baking soda test. We can put the link here. Um, Kathleen, if you can do that, put the link for us on here. Um, check out the baking soda test. Go do it at home. It's awesome. It's super easy to do. The family loves it. And you're going to find out, are you actually absorbing minerals properly? Because if you're not, you can drink and eat all the minerals in the entire world, take so many supplements, and they're still not getting in. So these are keys that you have to do. Number one, you have to actually be getting enough in to the inside and to the outside. And number two, you need to be absorbing it properly. So those are the big ones. And mom, you're not alone. Remember, you're growing humans. What does it take to grow a human? Are you providing your body with enough that can keep you healthy as well as them healthy too? All right. I have an adult Asperger's son who has his first two cavities filled last spring. The therapist at the time said his teeth began his demise at that age, and now he has horrible teeth. Our son believed this as a reality. Also dealing with, afraid he's been to dentist for confirmation. Often weekly, he has stopped eating for seven months. Whoa. All right. Same answer. Same answer. We have got to add minerals. Minerals, 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 minerals. So mama of Asperger, adult Asperger's son, you've got to be starting to add minerals. If you won't do a pill, do humic and fulvic. My favorite source of that is Mother Earth Labs. You can add it to anything. It's literally almost tasteless, and you got to start using the tooth powder when he was brushing his teeth. He's got to be adding minerals to the outside as well. So same answer goes for this one. Has got to be adding minerals. Otherwise, the teeth are going to are going to go on a rapid decline. If he's not eating, obviously he's not getting the nutrients he needs. You've got to get them in somehow. And I feel for you. I'm so sorry. That's a huge struggle. I actually have a son who struggles with eating problems as well because you can't make somebody eat. So hopefully you can find some ways to get those real essential nutrients in him. Had my, saw you in July. I saw, had my mercury removed. I'm returning in three weeks for cavitation surgery. What can I expect post-op? Good question. Let's first of all say, what is, what is cavitation surgery even? Honestly, I don't even love the word cavitation because nobody knows what it means. So what I say is it's an area in the bone that didn't heal properly when a tooth was removed. Now people will say, oh, I've never lost a tooth. 
Have you lost a wisdom tooth? Almost everybody's lost a wisdom tooth. And if, same story I was just saying, if you do not have enough nutrients at the time that you're healing from that surgery, so think about it. If you're taking these teeth out from ages, what, 15 to 20 in that range, it's usually the time your body still has a high demand for nutrients, still growing. You're not eating great. You're not sleeping great. Stress level's pretty high during those years, and your body just is not in prime mode for healing. So you have to add a lot of extra nutrients. If you didn't, the body didn't heal properly. And often we have these areas that didn't heal right in the, in the jaw bones. They harbor bugs of all varieties. Those bugs make us sick. So that's what we do is we go back in and we clean them out. I had mine cleaned out about a year ago. Post-op was actually surprisingly easy. Like you're chewing on stitches. It feels kind of weird. And you're a little stiff and sore, but you don't feel terrible. I tell people, though, you have to take three days to put your feet up. Why? Because your body can't heal if it's using resources for other things. If it's using resources to recover after you're working out or whatever it might be, then it does not have the resources that you need to actually grow those bones. People need to think literally about the way our bodies work. Literally, what resources are you providing it and how much does it have left over? So that's typically, you just need to put your feet up. You're probably not going to have to, like meaning like you're going to feel like you have to, but I need you to to be able to actually heal. I have inflammation after a root canal. I got that tooth extracted and I had a prosthetic I have inflammation after root canal. I'm glad you had the tooth removed. Prosthetic synthetic bone graft. Um, I don't see a question here. I'm not sure if there's a question related to this one. Kathleen, let me know if there is. I just saw a recent video and you posted about knowing if your tooth pain is actually your tooth or <laughs> trigeminal neuralgia is what you're meaning. What if it's the nerve? I had a cavity filled about a year ago. I've had a sore inside my nose that shoots pain right to that tooth when I touch my nose on the outside or inside. It's just inside my nose. It never heals. Super weird. All right, it may be that that tooth is actually dead and that's abscessed and it's le led to a space right there inside of the nose. That could be a part of the problem. One thing to try is nerves require a lot of omega fatty acids to heal. So you can do six to eight grams of omega fatty acids. I like a variety, three, six, and nine, even seven. You can add all those together. Um, a nice broad spectrum omega. You can add six to eight grams a day and that's am amazing for nerve health for nerve healing. So give that a try. If that doesn't work, I would go have a cone beam CT scan to make sure that tooth's still alive. I'm experiencing extreme left TMJ pain after wisdom teeth removal. How do I address this issue? Uh, first of all, I'm sorry to hear this. Most likely it's because of trauma or stress in that area from holding open and holding widely open. They also put a lot of downward pressure on that jaw joint when, um, when that removal is happening sometimes, especially if it's a difficult removal. So what do you do? The first thing you're going to want to do is get a device. My favorite is called an aqualizer. I'm actually not sure if you can buy that as a patient. It's a good question. About $25. And it's just some little tooth pillows. You can find something similar even at Walmart, that kind of thing. Um, you can, you just need something to rest the jaw on without straining it. So it's just a very simple device. You can find a simple night guard at Walmart. It's just going to keep your teeth apart. What you need is to relax this joint, something to be able to rest on. Some people find themselves putting their tongue even out between that, between the teeth. Most likely it's tendon muscle damage. So you're going to want to focus on that. I would encourage you to take Arnica. It's really great for helping with inflammation, swelling, any bruising. It seems like you're probably a little bit past uh, past bruising stage, but Arnica helps wonderfully. It's a homeopathic remedy. Um, you're also going to want to do uh, an herbal anti-inflammatory if you can find one. So an herbal anti-inflammatory, something that's going to really turn down the inflammation. So rest the jaw. Uh, again, if you can get an aqualizer, that's what we recommend. That's what we have at our office and an herbal anti-inflammatory along with some Arnica. Let's see if you can't calm those muscles down. Really take it easy. You're going to do no gum chewing. You're going to do nothing hard, no apples, no hard carrots on your back teeth. You're going to use front teeth to chew and you're going to do soft foods for a little while. You just need to give yourself a chill. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to jump to some questions we get on Instagram here that don't show me. Okay. How to get grounded when you live on the 21st floor of a high rise in a city? Uh -huh. This is a great question that I have an answer to. There are grounding products. So um, every, every outlet, this is an interesting thing to think about because we don't think about it. Every outlet, when you look at it, has two prongs in the U.S. here, has two prongs plus a circle below. The 
the two prong areas are where the electricity flows through. The circle is the grounding of that outlet. So what that means is that grounding place in that outlet goes to the ground, literally. In that building that you live in, there will be a ground that takes it all the way to the soil. So you can get grounding products. I have sheets on my bed that are, um, they're the fitted sheet that go underneath, and it is a, it is a grounding sheet. It has a wire that goes from the sheet to that ground in the plug, in the outlet. So what that means is I'm now connected myself when I'm laying on that sheet to the earth. Is that not cool? Pretty cool, I think. So check it out. Um, if you look up earthing sheets, earthing harmony is uh, where I get a lot of my things. Um, <clears throat> you can actually ground yourself through the ground in your outlet. I know, new concept. People don't understand. Okay, next one. Where am I located? If not in LA, can I recommend someone? So good question. Here is go to livingwellwithdrmichelle.com. There is a directory. It says, uh, look for a dentist. There's a directory on there that can show you someone close to home. I'm in Utah. Happy to have you come visit us, but we've also um, have vetted other dentists and practices just like ours that you can find on that directory. And if you know somebody that should be on that directory, send them our way. We try, the, we try to get them on there as well. My two boys have had very deep cavities. Can these be reversed? Do I need to get them filled immediately or can they be healed? They brush and floss every day and eat a vegetarian, mostly diet. All right. Once they're, this is a great question. Once a cavity is moved beyond the enamel layer, so there's two layers in the tooth. There's the enamel, which is the crystalline layer on the outside, mineral rich. And then there's the dentin layer, which is inside of that enamel layer. It has tubules that go all the way to the nerve that spread. I like to think of it like the super highway of the tooth. And those, once the cavity has progressed into that dentin layer, the bacteria have spread through the tooth and it's going to need to be fixed. And yes, quickly, because the longer you wait, especially if these are young children and these are baby teeth, baby teeth have very thin enamel. So the cavity progresses quite quickly through that enamel and into, into the dentin, and it progresses quickly from the dentin to the nerve. So those teeth will die within six months time. So very quickly, if they are deep, they need to get taken care of immediately. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at extensive, more extensive dentistry than what you're looking at now perhaps removing teeth, replacing teeth, all sorts of things that you really don't want to deal with. Yes, do the fillings. If they are into the dentin layer of the teeth, they need to be taken care of. They need to be filled and quickly. Um, I'm looking into releasing a tongue tie for my seven-year-old son. The dentist recommended removing his tonsils also. My son has behavioral and bedwetting problems. All right, let's talk about the tonsils. I'm 100% in, in favor of the tongue tie release, but let's talk about what it's going to even do for you. So <clears throat> the tonsils are the lymphatic drainage system of the head and neck. So if you have swollen tonsils, if he has swollen, swollen tonsils, there's a couple of things that can be leading to that swelling. Number one is allergies of some variety. This could be food allergies. I actually re recommend a technique called NAET. It's N-A-E-T. There's often practitioners near you that do this service. And what they, what they do is they identify the allergen and then they treat the bodies. Basically, they help to decrease the body's reaction to the allergen we've seen a lot of tonsils just shrink in size because the tonsils are reacting to something. They're reacting to some sort of allergen, some sort of thing that uh, they, they don't like. So what you're going to do is work on what could be causing those tons tonsils to swell. The other thing that could be causing the tonsils to swell is mouth breathing. Because when you're mouth breathing, what happens is the air is coming in through the mouth. It's hot, it's dry, it's dirty, it's unfiltered, and it will get caught in those tonsils. And the tonsils are simply doing their job of filtering that air for you. But then they're going to swell in the process. So mouth breathing is often because of tongue, pos tongue position and tongue posture, which is why I encourage that tongue position. But along with the tongue tie release, you're going to need to do something called myofunctional therapy. So if you contact my office, we can connect you with a doctor. My office is Total Care Dental. Com, we can connect you with a therapist that will help you with that myofunctional therapy. What you need that for is just because the tongue's released doesn't know, mean it knows where to go. So we're gonna, what this therapist does is train you how to bring it up and forward and out of the airway. If you can get the tongue up and forward, you can breathe through the nose better. And then oftentimes that tonsil swelling goes down on its own. So here's what I would do if this were my son. I would get the tongue tie release done along with my functional therapy. You actually need to start the therapy first, then the tongue tie release. I would give it a few months to see, does, you know, is he still mouth breathing? Is any of this resolving? Are the tonsils going down before taking the tonsils out? Because remember, the tonsils are simply the dashboard of the symptom. They're not the problem. Often they're looked at as the problem. The tonsils are the problem. My tonsils are too big. That's why I can't breathe very well. 
No, your tonsils are too big because you have something inflaming them and creating and creating this inflammation. Get rid of that. Tonsils go down. Tonsils can keep doing the job that they were intended to do, which is filter the head and neck area. You know, filter everything out of the head and neck area. <clears throat> All right. Um, where we go? I have a hole in my tooth. I think I broke a piece off while I was flossing and it's been hurting. I'm sure I'm in trouble. I've been using your tooth powder for about a year. What should I do? Go see a dentist. There are times you need to see a dentist. They can correct that. And then you keep doing the tooth powder to keep that tooth healthy. Do we perform pinhole tuck surgery over gum grafting for recession once root cause is taken care of? We don't necessarily do the pinhole surgery for a couple of reasons. There actually is a lot of relapse with pinhole surgery because usually they're not addressing root cause. So root cause is your number one. And then we do gum grafting because I don't want you to have to go back into this again. And really for me, the way I think about it is gum grafting is like a belt on your pants. Sometimes the belt, the pants are too loose and they're just going to fall down. We have to put a whole belt across there to hold it up. We can't just like tuck a knee up, you know, and hope it's going to stay up. No, we're just going to put a belt on to keep it up. So we use gum grafting so that it can be done one and done. I recently recommended a CPAP due to low oxygen at night, but I sleep worse with it. What other alternatives are there? What do I recommend somebody starting to investigate airway issues? So if you have a CPAP, that means you most likely already have had a sleep study, which would have already identified you as sleep apnea or with sleep apnea. Now it's time for a cone beam CT scan. We need to say, okay, what is the apnea from? Is it because you have an obstructed airway? Is it because there's inflammation or infection in the mouth? In the airway? Is it because you have too small of a mouth and everything can't fit? What is it because of? So cone beam CT scan and a dentist who knows what they're doing looking at it is the first place to start. How much radiation equivalent does a digital x-ray have? It's so much less than the old film analog versions that we used to use. I don't have an exact number, but the x-rays that we put in your mouth are equivalent to about 10 minutes in the sunshine. The CT cone beam scan that we use is about three hours of sunshine. So they're incredibly lower doses than they were with the old uh, analog x-rays that we used to take. I have a root canal and I don't have a biologic dentist. What would I recommend? Well, I find someone who can take it out. Honestly, the best thing at this point is to stay on top of the immune system support and antimicrobials of any variety. So I love, in fact, I'm coming out with a really amazing product in January that's going to be an elderberry immune system. It's elderberry plus herbals, all these things together in one. Until that time, find an elderberry product or find an herbal antimicrobial, and that's going to help keep things at bay at least while you find somebody who can remove that. Can we fill a wisdom tooth if it has a cavity? Absolutely you can. I actually prefer to leave wisdom teeth in the mouth if we can, if you can keep them clean. So yes, you can fill them if they have a cavity, no problem at all. How did I personally recover from years of inhaling and vapors from drilling mercury fillings out? I call them mercury fillings. This question says amalgam. What I did is I had a long, long period of detox and I had to remove myself from those mercury filling removal appointments. Actually, I stopped doing them. My other, my other doctors do them now. They're very, very careful. To, to do all the precautions for patients and for themselves while they do them. And I had to take, in fact, I, I continually just detox nonstop. You just have to get it out. And I think all of us do. I think we live in a toxic world. I mean, that's a reality. And I never like to use that as an excuse. Like, oh, we just live in such a toxic world. That's why we're all sick. Well, no, we live in a toxic world. It's the world we live in. It's our world. So let's work with our bodies and teach our bodies what they need to do to be able to live in this world because it's an amazing world. Honestly, it's an incredible, amazing world. Let's learn how to live here. Um, I had my bottom tori removed about eight years ago because they were causing a lot of discomfort. Unfortunately, they've grown back. Any recommendations for next step? Ha! Huh, thank you for asking this question. Tori, or extra bumps of bone down here are signs that you are squeezing your teeth. Why are you squeezing your teeth? Because you're not getting enough air at night. This is an absolute airway issue. If they have grown back, it's because the root cause of the reason they were there to begin with was not solved, which is your airway problems. Cone beam CT scan is your next step. I have a lot of health issues, including sleep apnea. I think I have a blocked sinus. Would I recommend seeing a sleep apnea ENT or a holistic dentist like me first? Holistic dentist, please. Cone beam CT scan. That's where you're going to start. I see so many people who have been to ENTs and they have received no answers whatsoever. Dentist first. I asked my biodentist if the digital x-rays he gave me are adequate for diagnosing infection. And he said, yes. Our cone beam CT scans the only way to find infection under the gum line. They're not the only way. However, they are the most accurate way. So they will show things. They are the only way to find some, to find things that are in old wisdom tooth areas, to be able to diagnose those accurately. We have to have a cone beam CT scan to be able to find the hidden infections under old failed root canals. We usually have to have a CT scan. 
it's just more accurate. My dentist said that I have to take three, take off three teeth to get braces. I'm 22. Do I go with that? Absolutely no. Basically, they're telling you to make your mouth smaller to be able to get braces. No, you want them to make your mouth bigger. You want them to make your mouth big enough for your tongue, for your tissue, and for your teeth. So find somebody else. Get another opinion. I have a crown that's broken twice. I finally did a gold instead of porcelain, and it keeps falling off. This has been a year and a half. Should I pull it or replace it? It's the last tooth in back. All right. If that crown keeps breaking, it means you are putting a ton of pressure on your teeth. You are probably squeezing because you're not getting enough air at night. Do I sound like a broken record? I am. This is what I say all day long, every day. You need to figure out why is that tooth breaking? Why is that crown falling off? That tooth is in the line of fire. It's the very back tooth, so it gets the most pressure. So if that one is struggling, it means that you are putting a ton of pressure on, most likely, again, because of airway issues. Cone beam CT scan, find out what's happening. What are our thoughts on home water ozonation rinsing systems? Okay, well, that's a good, good question. I actually just changed my home water system, but I did not get ozonated water, and let me tell you why. Ozone in the water actually does not last very long. The half-life of ozone in the water is about, if, if the water stays cool, it's four hours. If it is room temperature or warm, it's less than that. So really, it's not going to do you benefit. If it's ozonating because it's going to kill bugs, then that's going to be helpful to you. But if you're ozonating with the intention of getting that ozone water into your system, it won't be by the time it makes it to you. So it's really not worth the money spent for that reason. Are there any fluoride-free salts to rinse with? And what is the benefit of salt rinsing, if any? I don't actually think there is a benefit of salt rinsing. I like oil pulling, but the main thing I like is just rinsing with colloidal silver and hydroxyapatite, which is what my mouth rinse has. So check it out. Completely fluoride-free. I don't believe that you need to do any kind of a salt. Um, I take salt, but I don't rinse with it. So I don't think you need to rinse with it. I've heard that gum grafts can fail, and they're very painful. What causes them to fail? And what is the best way to prevent the pain? Um, <laughs> gum grafts can fail because the they didn't address what was actually causing the gum to recede in the first place. So if gum grafts, if the reason that the recession was there wasn't addressed, the gum graft will recede the same way that the original gums receded, if that makes sense. So that causes them to fail. The fact that the re original reason that the gum receded wasn't addressed, then the graft will recede as well. So the best way to prevent, well, the best way to prevent the pain, best way to prevent the gum graft from failing, which will prevent the pain because you're not going to do it again. The best way to prevent the graft from failing is to actually find why did you recede? Why did your gums recede to begin with? What are the most common reasons? They are often the bite or the way the teeth fit together, create an area that rocks the tooth. So the bite's rocking the tooth. When the tooth rocks, it leads the gums to go up past the point of flexure or past that rocking spot. So the gum recedes. Many dentists tell you it's because you're brushing too hard. And I always question that because I say, well, why are you brushing just that one tooth right there too hard? Doesn't it hurt? Well, yeah, it's really sensitive. So why are you brushing it too hard? Well, I don't think I am. You're not. You have to find out the other reason. Sometimes it's just that you have thin gum. So in that case, you need to do a gum graft. Do it once. That's the best way to minimize the pain is to only have to do it once. My dentist recommended that I take out my full mol four molars because I have cavities and not enough space. What would I do in this situation? If you have cavities and they are truly compromising the tooth, the tooth is not restorable, then you take it out and you replace it. If you're just removing it because of space reasons, that's not the answer. You need to make your mouth big enough to retain them. Because once you've made it too, once you've made it smaller, what happens now is that things don't fit and you are going to have airway issues. You're going to have trouble breathing and staying and getting enough air at night, all these kinds of things. Reason for cobblestones on tonsils. I like the word cobblestone. I've never heard it called that before. We talked about tonsils a little earlier. Basically, tonsils are the, the lymphatic system or the drainage system of the head and neck area. If they are swollen, it means that they're inflamed because of something. So that inflammation leads the, it's kind of like those squishy balls in the grocery store that you squeeze and the eyeballs pop out. Same thing. So when they get swollen, those 
crypts or natural holes inside of the tonsils get larger and they're more likely to catch calcification or calcium. So first of all, you have to address why is the tonsil swollen? Second, you have to add vitamin D and most importantly, actually vitamin K2, which is the traffic cop or the director for calcium in the system. It will tell it where to go. It'll put it in the right places instead of the wrong places like your tonsils. Daughter has Hashimoto's and possibly SIBO. What do I recommend? Well, first of all, you need to decide what is compromising her immune system. It may be that the SIBO is actually the thing that's compromising the immune system. So what I'd recommend, first of all, is there are specific tests to find out, is it SIBO? And if that's the case, there are natural ways to treat SIBO. You don't have to do heavy rounds of antibiotics, which is the common treatment remedy or common treatment path. You could actually do herbal versions, but you need to find out if that's really the problem. Hashimoto's is an immune system issue. So what is compromising the immune system? Is there hidden infection somewhere? It's often in the wisdom tooth areas or a failed root canal. Are there metals somewhere that are causing the immune system to be overactive or hyperactive, which then starts to attack its own tissues, which is all autoimmune disease is. You really need to get to root cause when you start looking at this. What is the best way to whiten? The best way to whiten is add hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is what creates white teeth. So what you're going to do is add my tooth powder, mouth rinse. They both have hydroxyapatite in them. And if you would love the to even be whiter, if there's some staining on the teeth, use the whitening version of my tooth powder. Amazing results. So many people are seeing such whiter teeth naturally because of this. What's my recommendation for a whole house, for a whole house filter? That's water, I'm assuming. That's coming soon. I'm still working through mine. We just switched ours out. I'll be telling you some information very soon on that one. My husband has a lot of nasal issues and his ENT says it's just reflex. Would you be able to help? Baking soda test is where you're going to start. Do the baking soda test to see if it's low acid levels that are leading to this. I just had a root canal removed and PRF. How long can I expect to heal from health issues caused by a root canal? You know, a lot of times the body has to detox all that infection, has to get rid of all of that. And so it's a rebuilding process. You've got to add what it needs to rebuild. You've got to add a lot of minerals right now. You're growing bone. You've got to add a lot of vitamin D, K. Those are two biggies. Vitamin D3, K2 tells the minerals where to go. But you also need to add a lot of vitamin C. People don't understand that vitamin C is simply electrons. It's simply powering us up. If we, are, if we have a root canal, are we doomed to get toxic decay from it? No, you're not doomed. However, it is going to be an immune system irritant and potentially infect your entire system. So do you need to get it out? You need to get a CT scan. That's what you need to start with. How can I shrink my pockets? My last visit, I had a five. I brush and floss daily. I've now started using a water pick. So what I would add is I would add my mouth rinse to this and I would add it in the water pick a little bit in that water pick and I would make sure that it gets all the way down inside of those pockets. The key is to kill what's living in there. Once you've killed what's living in there, the body itself will do the healing, will tighten everything up, but you've got to get make sure that everything in there is gone. What's the best way to determine what is causing gum line recession? So gum line recession is, like I said, it's often due to bite issues. Sometimes it's due to infectious issues. That's the first step. Is you're, going to, you're going to do a gum exam to determine is this gum infection that's leading to this or is it something else? If it's gum infection, you're going to go down the path of treating gum infection. If it's something else, you're going to identify that. Is this bite related? What is this or is this just simply I have thin gums? What is the cause? And then you're going to start treating that. Braces cause the gums to enlarge. I've had them off for a year. Do you need to do gum surgery? Good question. You need to hit this with anti-inflammatories and antimicrobials. So I would do oil pulling if you have a gum enlarged gums. I would do oil oil pulling and I would add my tooth powder and rinse. I don't just recommend these products because I want you to buy them. I actually recommend them because they work. Um, so you need to add mouth rinse and you're going to start rinsing with that two, even three times a day. The breath spray is actually the mouth rinse. Take it with you, start swishing with it. Every single time you're going into something, just pop it out of your purse, squirt it, swish it around. It'll help. It'll help. And if it doesn't, then you can do the surgery. But I always ask, why are they swollen? Why are they swollen? Let's get them, let's just get the swelling down and then you won't have to do surgery. I'm about three months post-op top tooth extraction with bone grafting and I'm having issues with a swollen cheek, throbbing gum pain and leakage. Dentists tell me I'm fine, but I am not fine. I guarantee you, you are not fine. Bone graft failure, absolutely. I think that is a bone graft failure. You need to go have a CT scan and see what's going on. You should not feel this. You should not have a swelling, che swollen cheek. I guarantee you, you have infection in that graft area. It needs to be cleaned out. I would find someone who can do PRF and ozone. Ozone to clean the bugs out, PRF to actually regrow that area. 
My husband was told he needs a colonoscopy at the age of 37. His mouth is possibly causing issues in his gut. I know he does have some silver fillings and a gold tooth. So colonoscopy, the question is why are they recommending the colonoscopy? Are they concerned about cancer? Are they concerned about inflammation? What's the concern the colonoscopy would be dealing with? And then you go from there. Could silver fillings be causing inflammation? 100%. Could gold fillings be less than silver, but still they are throwing off electron flow? So they could be a problem. What's the cause for Tory growth in the mouth? Funny, we talked about this just a little earlier. Squeezing your teeth. Find out from a comb beam CT scan why you're not getting the air you need. Getting a coronectomy on my two bottom wisdom teeth, having nerve pain. Could the root die and have to be removed later? 100% the root's going to die. I've literally only seen one time when a coronectomy was done and it was successful. What that means is they chop off the top of the tooth but leave the bottom roots alone. I've literally only seen that be successful one time. Every other time I've seen massive infection and infection to the point that you don't feel it, you don't have symptoms, but it makes you very, very sick. I would be very concerned about a coronectomy. I've only seen one successful in my 26 year career. I've had my wisdom teeth removed and had a dry socket in one of them. Can that lead to a cavitation? Absolutely. That's almost 100%. If you had a dry socket, you have you have an area that didn't heal properly. That's just the definition of it. All right. I am trying to jump back on. Those are all the Instagram ones. I'm going to try to do just a couple more. I'm going to finish in about four minutes here. Um, how can I get rid of inflammation? Uh, I think we already did that. Inflammation spreading through the whole body. You have to figure out what this inflammation is from. What is this infection that's causing this inflammation? Inflammation doesn't just happen. If you have inflammation in the body, it's because there's an infectious source somewhere that's doing it. So you need to, first of all, add support to your immune system. You need to bolster the immune system. Elderberry, vitamin C are huge ones right now this time of year. Add them all the time. Can we ship the aqualizer? We can ship, ship the aqualizer. Uh, contact our dental office and we can talk about that. Love being grounded, yes. Um, do we recommend specialists? If you weren't on earlier, yes. We have a directory, a dental directory on livingwellwithdrmichelle.com. Check it out. Dentists all over the United States are signing up so that we can send you to them. And we vet them. We make sure that they have the correct, proper training. All right, we have that already on there. My daughter has a molar tooth second from the back. She's 13. She doesn't have any signs of wisdom teeth coming in. That's great. They could try to pull the furthest tooth back forward, but likely won't get all the way forward. She's also too young for an implant. I don't want a root to do a root canal, but she has an infection in that tooth and an abscess that's occasionally lets out some pus. Get the tooth out. Get the tooth out. You could deal with replacing the tooth later. It's fine. I had a son. He lost his three front teeth when he was 11 years old. We did not do implants until he was about 21. It's okay. We can figure out ways to replace the missing tooth temporarily with retainers, with other things. It's time to get the tooth out. She absolutely needs that infection gone. I wouldn't worry about bringing it forward. You just do an implant when she's old enough. Can you please see my questions? Uh, I think I did, hopefully. Teeth are falling out at the root. Stage four liver, weekly albumin infusion. Platelets are 42. Help. Oh, you just have got to add more nutrients to your system. I'm so sorry you're having this issue. You've just got to do three times, four times, five times as much as other people do when it comes to nutrients because you just aren't absorbing properly. And it's challenging with, with liver failure because you don't process things the same way either. So I would start with things on the outside. So that's going to be the hydroxyapatite tooth powder. You're going to brush with it, but then you're going to just literally lay it on your teeth and go to bed. Last thing you do before you go to bed, you're just going to try to add as many things as you can to the mouth and get them to stay there. Would I recommend the tooth powder to someone that still has amalgam in their teeth or should they be removed first? Is it safe to use? The concern with the mercury or the tooth powder is simply does it abrade the, the mercury and release mercury? Every single thing you're going to use in your mouth will. Every single toothpaste will. It doesn't matter. So what you're going to do is just lightly brush. You really don't need to brush the mercury filling, right? Because it's not going to get a cavity. So just don't brush across that filling and the the rest of it, the benefit's going to be there for everything else. Can military neck cause facial and TMJ pain? Huh. So this is a really interesting question. Military neck means a very upright neck posture. Military neck doesn't lead to facial and TMJ pain. Military neck is also is usually because of TMJ and facial pain. You need to get a code B CT scan and see why is your neck doing this? Why is your head posture this way? It's usually because of airway issues. So most likely that's the cause. My husband is undergoing oral radiation from ear to ear for squamous cell carcinoma. I'm so sorry. Any tips for mouth sores and dryness? 100% my mouth rinse, but I would use the citrus version because the mint is too, it will burn. So citrus version, it has, it has marshmallow root in it, which is incredibly good for mouth sores and dryness. So the citrus version, unfortunately we are out of it. 
He can try. He can try. I would do the breath spray first to see if he can handle the mint. If he can, then get the mint. But the citrus should be coming very, very soon. Do we remove? Do you remove bone and cavitation surgery or just laser? We absolutely open them up. And here's the reason why. I often will tell people, I'm like, the problem is there's dead tissue in the jawbone. A laser cannot remove the dead tissue. We have to get that out. Otherwise, the bugs are going to just find that dead tissue again. We have to clean it out first. We can't just do laser. It's not adequate. In my hands, in my experience, and I've done thousands of these surgeries myself. All right. Thank you all. I'm going to get back to my family. We're here at Top Golf. We're having fun today. I'm going to get back to that. But I love doing these. I love your questions. I love to do rapid fire. So keep them coming. We're just going to do this every single week. And send your questions ahead of time if you want us to make sure to get to them. I love sharing. And thank you all for supporting what we're doing. Have a great day and have a happy new year.